Gartside is 27 and lives in Manchester. Over the past five years, he's clocked up a debt of £29,127 from constant nights out and a growing wardrobe of designer clothes. I think from about the age of 14, I've always had to have kind of like the new thing. Graham's got a fashion degree and one thing it seems to have taught him is a unique appreciation for Vivian Westwood, a shop where the cheapest shirt is £150. While Vivian is cashing in, Graham's bank balance is losing out. It's quite a bit, but it doesn't seem that worrying because the main part of it is to my mother. Graham may not be worried, but his mother is. Over the last year, she's loaned Graham £20,000. I need to learn to say no. But Graham won't take no for an answer. He hates staying in, preferring to treat his friends to endless rounds of drinks and always arriving by his preferred method of transport, a shiny black cab. I know that she's not going to be around forever and I don't know what I'd do if she wasn't. I need to learn to stand on my own two feet quickly. <laughs> but it seems the journey from debt might be a bumpy one. I'm not putting up with it. Move out, move out, move out. Move out. Yeah, but at least mine's paid on time and it's my mother, so she shouldn't have to do it for you. Move out. <sighs> Eight months ago, Graham was working in marketing, but threw in the towel knowing his mum would subsidise his spending. Since then, he's been a gentleman of leisure, preferring to shop than work. Graham is on first-name terms with all the boutique managers in Manchester, and they love to see him as he flexes his mother's credit card. Yeah, I think you've got to have that. Oh, I think I definitely It looks really, really, really good. It looks great. It's a naughty boy. So what do we say, Graham? We say thank you, Mum. <laughs> Graham's been so relaxed about raiding the maternal piggy bank that he's only just started working again, doing a casual 15 hours a week in a bar, earning £67.50. Because she's paid for my phone bills, she's paid my rent. <laughs> in fact, she pays for everything when I'm stuck. She even sends the Tesco's van around with my shopping for me. <laughs> but the question remains whether Graham can break from this comfort zone and go it alone. It's time to bring on the experts, Jay Hunt and Benjamin Fry, who have just five weeks to try to help Graham redress his mother's bank balance. Lifestyle expert Jay will show Graham how his fashion degree can come into good use outside the designer shops. You know, your mum can afford Vivian Westwood. And psychological coach Benjamin Fry will look at the emotional issues behind Graham spending. How do you feel about that kind of dynamic that basically you're failing to support yourself? Graham lives in a rented house in Cheatham Hill, 10 minutes from Manchester city centre, with his flatmates Steph, Ben and Lisa. Although Benjamin and Jay have never met Graham before, they have been lent the keys to his house. Benjamin's looking for psychological motives behind his spending, while Jay is looking for where the money's actually going. Quite neat, I must Quite say. Neat. I'm struggling to... Uh... Oh I goodness. thought that was family photographs. Yes, that is but it's No, it's Dolly Parton. I didn't know Cliff Richard was his dad. And Cliff Richard. I thought it was his family photos on okay. here. Sound of Music, Beaches, Oklahoma, Sunset Boulevard. Hello, Dolly. Now, tell me the truth. Did you put those there? <laughs> no, I haven't. Got two mobile phones. It's unusual. <gasps> 370. £370.74. That's one month's phone bill on one phone. Wow. Oh my God. Right, I'm taking all of these okay. and those, yeah? There you go. Right, we'll take these. Graham wasn't impressed by the network on the first phone contract his mother took out, so after a bit of persuasion, her husband David took out a second one for Graham. In January, we paid uh, £480 in mobile phone bills for Graham. And we had to pay it because otherwise I get bad credit rating, which I don't want. Thank you very much. Ah. Look at this, hair products. Oh. These aren't cheap. Ceramic hair straighteners. Oh, I could use some of them. There's one thing you can't miss in Graham's room. Mm. Wow, look at this clothes rail. That is a lot of Vivian Westwood clothes. I can spot that. Look, yeah. Westwood. You can spot it just like Westwood. that. Westwood. 
westward. Wow. Westward, westward. It's all from one shop. Yeah, I mean, that is thousands and thousands of pounds worth of stuff there. Is Vivian Westwood like one of the most expensive shops? Well, to buy? no, but it's kind of like, it's obviously his thing. So, I mean, look. Even the shoes. Wow. You know, I know, because I've seen these shoes, they're about 300, 325 pounds for they those. They look like one of Howard Hughes's planes. And they're not really worn either. Obviously, the, the, his canvas is himself, mm. and his home is relatively irrelevant. Well, so, uh, mustn't forget these. OK, let's take them and see Although, what we can find. I think we know where it's going. My appearance, I guess, to me, matters more than a lot of other things. Um, I don't smoke. I don't particularly like cars. <laughs> I might as well spend them on my clothes. So, yes, it does mean a lot to me. Graham has a partial for everything designer, including expensive cocktails in Manchester city centre bars. The problem is he likes to be seen as the man who can fund everyone else's good night out too. I'm very generous with my mum's money. <laughs> and I'm very generous with my mum's money to other people. The first person to buy a round, basically, and it's just, you very rarely see any of his uh, friends buying drinks. <laughs> now I think about it, Graham seems to pay for most of the takeaways and wine and taxis. It makes me quite happy to do stuff for other people, and it always has. But I think my mum was quite the same, though. That's what she used to do, you know. And I do it too. <laughs> For Graham, there's only one way to travel, by cab. Up to three of them a day. My dad used to sum up very well, I think, Graham. He wants to live a champagne lifestyle, and my dad used to say, uh, on a brown ale income, but he's not even on a brown ale income, Graham. I think he's on a lemonade income. Forget the taxes. Get on a bus, Graham. You know, like the rest of the world gets on a bus, because a bus ticket might cost him a pound, and a taxi fare will cost him £10. You know, get on a bus or walk. They're only 10 minutes from Manchester, where he lives at the moment. He could walk. Graham's been taking advantage of his mum Eileen's generosity since he was a teenager. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good when night. he's on a night out and needing money, he doesn't head to the cash point. He texts his mum for an immediate transfer of cash, and he doesn't give up easily. First of all, I broached it by sending a text message going, Mum, you know how much I love you. I need to ask you a favour. Please don't shout at me. <laughs> and it always starts like that. So then she'll ring me, and it's kind of like this merry dance that we do. She'll ring me. I'll ignore the phone call once, just because I know she's going to start shouting the minute she gets on the end of the phone. Then she'll text me going, well, answer your phone then. So then I'll ring her back, and then I'll explain. And then she'll say no. <laughs> so then it usually results in me hanging the phone upon him. And then I'll ring her back again and say I'm sorry and say that I really need it. And then she usually caves in and gives it to me. And she always says it's going to be the last time and it never is the last time, so... He knows exactly now which buttons to press to get more money out of Mummy. But the point now is that we're reaching the stage where there isn't any more money for Graham to come to me for. And he knows that, I've told him that, I need now. I haven't been well myself, I need to work towards my retirement in five and a half years' time, and I need to start saving some money for Mummy. Eileen teaches art in a secondary school, and her salary's been stretched to the limit by the constant transfers into Graham's bank account. For the first time, she's going through her online statements to see just how many transactions she has made to Graham. 13th of December, Graham got outside £50. 13th of December, Graham got outside another £50. 20th of December, Graham got outside £50. 20th of December, Graham got outside £120. Plus the rent, plus the shopping. 22nd of November, £30. And then again, another £50. So that must have been a second demand. 17th of September, Graham, £200. 20th of September, Graham, £200. I don't want to go back any further. What am I working for? To fund Graham's champagne lifestyle and socialising. Can't do that anymore, can I? I certainly shock myself. 
I knew he'd had a lot of money, but £600 in a week and £3,000 in a previous week. I would never have believed it until I've actually just sat and looked back now. With Mum's savings running low, it's time for Graham to face some home truths. Benjamin and Jay have identified Graham's two most excessive areas of spending. They've come to Manchester to give it to him straight. I think this is going to be an absolute <laughs> winner. Graham's got no idea. What he's Nothing getting like into. getting the point across. Graham? He's run away. Oh, Graham! Hiya, Graham. Hello, Hello Graham. <laughs> How are you? I'm Benjamin. Hello, Come on I'm Jay. Out. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, come with me. I've got a bit of a surprise for you. OK. Cos I gather you've got um, one or two debts. Uh, one or two. Yeah. A couple of things have really stood out. One of them is about to come round the corner right yes. now. Oh, my gosh, yes. You know what that is? Public transport. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big red bus. And there's his friend. Another big one. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it is quite shocking when you see it like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what to say to that. I, uh... <laughs> Taxi for Graham. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Count them. I'm going to tell you that we have for you today 18 taxes. Because <laughs> on average, you spend £18 every single day oh, no. on taxis. What you have to realise is that that comes to £6,570 a year. Now it's hitting home. Is this something you'd like to change to try to help your debts? Definitely. Well, when you tell me it's that much money, then, yeah. All right, too. That worked. <laughs> OK, now, can you do me a favour? Can you find us a tax? Because yeah, we need to show you some more stuff. We might as well take the one at the back. It'll save me 20p. OK, well, the, 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 now <laughs> you're getting the hang of it. <laughs> do you ever get on a bus or use a train or anything? Is it always a taxi? Once in a blue moon. Right. But when I want to be somewhere, I want to be somewhere, and you just don't get that right. with going on a bus. But the shock's not over yet. Jay and Benjamin have got another trick up their sleeve. So close your eyes. Uh, keep your eyes shut, Graham. Keep your eyes shut. Now, Graham. Yes. You may open your eyes. And I want your eyes <laughs> to scan this bar, <laughs> OK? Now, all these drinks on this bar are your favourite shots. And what this represents, this absolute mass of alcohol here, is the drinks that you have bought for yourself and your friends over the past year, OK? Because at the moment, you're clocking up £102 a week on alcohol for you and your mate, being Mr Party that you are. Right. And that adds up to £5,304 every single year. So I think you better have one of these to steady your nerves. <laughs> Down there, that's Graham. Yeah, this will be the last one for last a while. One, yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that really is drinkable. <laughs> I mean, you are Mr. Party of Manchester, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. No wonder everybody wants to come out for a drink with you. <laughs> now you understand. Now I understand what. Exactly. <laughs> when you see that it's that much money laid out like this over a whole year. Can you see that actually parting perhaps is something that you have to kind of earn before yes. you go and do it? Because otherwise, you just end up in debt. And probably to tell you the truth about this much is probably what I spent on myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is Graham's bit. <laughs> and that's Graham's friend's bit. This is Graham's friend's <laughs> bit. Exactly. Well, there wow. you go. So it's something to think about, isn't it? Oh, I'm thinking about it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if Graham's going to get his bar tab down, he'll need a little perspective. Radical measures are called for. How much money do you think you get through on an average week? I've never really thought about it, to tell you the truth. Um... And we're thinking about stuff that's like non-essential spending, so not including your rent, but stuff that you just choose to spend money on. Oh, my God, £200. £200? In a week or a day, was it? <laughs> 
So £200 a week, you think, is what you get through, yeah? Yeah? yeah. Well, we've been through your statements. The amount of money that you get through in an average week in Graham World is £478.86p. Does that shock to you? It's over yeah. double what you thought. Yeah, and over quadruple what I earn. <laughs> Put That'll that be way. the key problem. <laughs> yeah. Do you see now why you're in debt? It's becoming clearer mm. each minute. <laughs> now, what we would like you to do for the next seven days is to do what we call cold turkey, which is where we ask you to survive on the minimum amount of money you think you can survive on for non-essential items. OK. So make us an offer. No taxis. Well, you get the money, you choose what you do with it. <laughs> um, Oh, I don't know. Shall we go in with £100 and see how we go from there? Well, you can start at 100 if you like. I think we'll start at 20 Yeah, why not? I could spend that while I was brushing my teeth in the morning. <laughs> I don't disbelieve you. <laughs> um, Let's find a middle ground, shall we? Go on, then. No, you go on. Sure. Yeah, you go on. Can we try 50 what do you think? That's about eight pounds a day. Yeah. <laughs> what about forty? Oh, no. Yes. Do you think you could really give it a go on forty quid? I mean, it's going to be no takeaways, no taxes, no buying rounds for everybody, no trips to Vivian Westwood. <laughs> Probably getting the bus. We know what the next seven days is going to be, but you know, is it worth a, worth a try? I'll give it a go. Oh, good man, <laughs> good Graham. Good man, Graham. Well, best of luck. I'm going to need it. <laughs> you are. And you might need a bicycle, too. Now, this whole £40 thing, I think I might as well give it a good go. If they can help me out, um, I'll see what I can do with it. I'm a survivor, so I think I'll be able to manage. We'll just have to cut out the taxis and all those drinks. I think somebody might just have to buy for me for a change. Can Graham survive his first ever week of frugal living? It's time to find out. As he only works 15 hours a week, Graham has lots of free time on his hands, which he usually fills with countless shopping trips. Today he's playing it safe, and cheap, by staying in. Like normally I'd go to the cinema, you know, and like have something to eat at the cinema if I'm bored, and that would cost maybe £20 a time by the time you're done with everything, and I've not been doing that. By day two, Graham's got itchy feet. With so much free time and so little cash, there's only one thing to do. He's decided to do a few extra shifts at the bar where he works. It's 5.50 altogether, please, yeah. folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm trying to do more shifts because then it kind of, like, takes away all the spare time that I've got to be spending this money, and it gives me more money as well that I'm earning, so it's kind of like win-win all round, I think. You all right, mate? Oh, you've been so... Oh, gosh. And for the first time ever, at 2am, Graham braves the night bus home. Even got the bus home from work tonight. Um, bit scary, but still managed to do it. Um, had to wait around for a while in the cold. Not what I usually have to do with taxis, but I think... I managed to save about £15 and I'm sure £15 would be better spent on some new clothes. No, I'm just kidding. It's midway through Graham's cold turkey week and time for psychological coach Benjamin Fry to take a closer look at what's been driving Graham's spending. So your mother is really... The, the bank of Graham. The lifeline of Graham. Right, OK. When did this behaviour start with you relying on your mother in this way? Um, probably when I was younger, yeah. I should imagine, very young, maybe 13, 14. Right. Graham's parents yeah. divorced when he was seven. His mother met a new partner who lived with the family for the next 15 years. 
It was a difficult time for Graham. There used to be um, a man in her life that really didn't enjoy me being around very much. Right. So the only way she had to keep a happy medium and kind of like keep me at peace was by buying me things. Mm -hmm. And I guess I've relied on that ever since. So when you were 13, that's when you remember it? Yes. And My she... first pair of trainers, the most expensive pair of trainers I could possibly find. I remember them. I remember the colour of them. I remember everything about them. Uh, <laughs> she started to give you money to make up for not being able to give you the time that he I wanted think so. from her. I do think so. I don't know whether she'd see it like that, but yeah. that's the way I think of it. In what way were you um, left your own devices? Were you kind of left in the house or sent out to play? Or... Um, usually probably sitting watching the TV in my room. Yeah, so you were left in the house on mm. your own. It's tough and I wonder who you blame for that. I sometimes blame her when I'm talking to her and having an argument. It's like when she moans at me about spending all this money, I always tell her, it's your fault, you made me this way. <laughs> but when I sit back and I think about it, kind of like logically, you know, in the cold light of day, I can't blame her for it. Actually, what you're communicating to your mother is that you're angry with her. And I, th I think that money often becomes a tremendous way for a child to communicate anger to a parent because it seems so natural at first, doesn't it? Yeah. It's so easy to get into, and it becomes so satisfying. So it's, you know, that little victory. Yep. Of like, I've taken your money, and now you suffer and I go out and have fun. It's revenge. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, I can, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Although not in the nastiest sense of the word. No, not in the sense that you wake up in the morning and think, how no, can I'm I get, get my you. revenge? <laughs> Benjamin's interested to know whether being left on his own as a youngster has meant Graham finds it painful to spend time alone now. And do you hate being...? The one that's not out? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I do. Sort of left on your own. And that's usually why I'm the one arranging for everybody to come out. And then entertain them when they're there? And then entertain them when they're there, yes. So you're paying for them to be out? With you? Basically, yes. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there? No. Can you bear to accept that to change, you might have to go into these dark places that you've spent an awful lot of time and money resisting going into? Yes. Well, let's do it. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Greg. It's day five of cold turkey and Graham's still holding on to his cash. He's only spent £14, and he and flatmate Ben are braving the foreign world of the local cut price supermarket to buy bargain food. 18 p. 18 pence. <laughs> Try one. 3.99. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I could imagine that being a supermarket in Beirut. <laughs> you do actually, when you come out of Sainsbury's though, you're like, you're quite happy about buying stuff. And <laughs> you really want to get back and start like unpacking it. But here I'm just, oh, <laughs> awful. I suppose the food's probably gonna taste fine and um, it was inexpensive, but the whole the kind of feeling you get from shopping in there was quite hellish. I'm feeling a little better about saving all this money, but um, I don't, it doesn't quite equal to the excitement I get when I'm spending all the money, but we'll see. It could change. <laughs> it's the last day of cold turkey, and unbelievably, Graham's determined to come in under budget. So determined, he's got his friends to take him out for a change. It's not surprising he's tired. Graham's done the unthinkable. By not taking taxis, upping his hours at the bar, and braving the cut price supermarket, he's managed to spend just 27 out of the 40 pounds he was given at the start of the week. Now it's time for Jay to set Graham a realistic budget he can stick to. We've got 
a new spending plan because on the current spending rate at the moment you are spending three thousand and seventy three pounds every month wow. that's how much it comes to and we're recommending that you spend six hundred and seventy four pounds <laughs> twenty five does that panic you when you hear that um a little, but not as much as it did before. I've just survived on £40, pounds, so... <laughs> <laughs> but this is a realistic budget for you on your salary. Mm. If you take your mum and her spending power and her loans and her generous spirit out That's of it, it, this is about Graham taking responsibility for his life mm. and how much he earns and how much he contributes. Yeah. At the moment, your rent is £172 a month, isn't mm. it? Which your mum pays. She does. OK, this month, you're paying £172 for your own rent. OK. OK? Clothes. Your mum has been spending £250. Now, we've put that down to £50. OK. But we didn't want to make it zero mm. because, you know, I know that's your big thing and you love clothes. So £50, you are going to have to think about things. Mm. But it's not like you've got nothing no. for it. Taxes... £546 you've been spending, and we are recommending that while you get back on your feet, that goes to zero. However, the good news for you, Graham, is that at the moment, although you spend zero on bus <laughs> tickets, we're going to give you £30 towards getting on the buses. So you're not very harsh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, Graham, look, I mean, it's like just <laughs> practically outside your house is a bus stop. <laughs> and we've taken the money away for the taxes. Yep. We've given you the £30 to start getting the buses. So I thought, if I come with you today on the bus... Hold my hand. Yeah, we're just <laughs> going to go somewhere up the road. It's not a very long bus journey. OK. But I'll come with you today, OK, because this is going to get you into practice Should be with fun. buses. This is the first time graham has been on a bus in broad daylight for years. So how does it feel being on the bus? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Because obviously <laughs> your mum was paying for the taxes. Yeah, the and in Graham time. world, we're on the bus. It's fine. We're I'm not surviving. going very far, actually, because I thought we'd just go on a nice little journey okay. today to get you into it. And I thought we could go and do a little bit of shopping today. Oh, that's always good. Within <laughs> Graham's budget. So we're off to TK Maxx. <laughs> Double whammy. Wow. Bus and discount shopping. The How does bus that feel? And discount shopping. Yeah, it sounds like a fun day out. <laughs> you don't look like you believe what you're saying. Oh. Well, I'm trusting of you, so we'll see how okay. this goes. <laughs> this is right on your doorstep as well, isn't I know. it? I should be ashamed. <laughs> With just £50 in his new clothing budget, Graham's got to make his money go a lot further. So Jay's brought him to a store where you can buy labels for less. Mr. Gucci. <laughs> I feel like these are a bit like a fly. So Graham, how do you actually feel being in here shopping? Like I'm about to start hyperventilating. <laughs> do you seriously? <laughs> yes. It makes you uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. What is it about being in here that you don't like? I think it's just the mass of sprawling clothes and I don't know where to start. <laughs> so you feel that if you're in a sort of high-end shop, you're almost guided towards things you like and it's very easy? Yeah, and I think it's the kind of one-on-one -on -one attention you get from right. the staff in the shop as well. Because, I mean, here, there are great bargains to be had. Does that appeal? It does, but up until now, I would have rather paid the money just for it to be brought straight to me. <laughs> But the reality is that what you've been spending is your mum's money. Yes. You know, your mum can afford Vivian Westwood and has got a very nice <laughs> amount of it to show. But Graham, on the amount that he's bringing in at the moment, this is where he should be shopping. Yep. And that's probably not a very nice thing to deal with because you have been in Graham's fantasy world <laughs> of Vivian Westwood, taxes, For drinks, all the rest of it. And, you know, it is a bit of a culture shock. Yep, most definitely. But, you know, you're here and, you know, we're going to have a bit of a rummage and well, it might not be as bad as you think. We'll make the most of it. Because <laughs> now we're after bargains, yeah? OK. So get flicking. But without the personal attention from shop assistants, which Graham adores, he's finding the whole experience rather challenging.
Jay's got her work cut out. Graham, uh, loads of diesel here. 30 and 32 waste, and they're all about 30 quid instead of 75. Yeah. What have you found? Just a couple of things. Nothing too exciting. How much are they? I think that one's seven pounds. <laughs> seven quid? Seven quid. Within Graham's new budget. I'm convinced Graham heads for the changing rooms. To his surprise, he's found himself some designer jeans and a black top. Let's have a look, Graham. Hey, those look very you, those no, jeans. No, they are. They're pretty cool. Um, and that's really nice. Yeah. Wore How some much? of my own stuff as well. But... How much is that? Um, that one's 24.99 instead of 55. And the jeans are what? 33.99 instead of 75. It's like you've got your own T-shirt on and you've got your belt on and the other two items are from here. Yep. And it all kind of works. Because you still really look like Graham dressed in that. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I really like it. I do. I didn't think I'd find anything and I found two things, so it's definitely a start. How much is that? 667 Okay, so that's over your £50 budget. So if you are going to buy that, I'm You're going to have to, to do some extra a hours. A bit harder, but not that, too much harder. But you are going to have to do extra hours. Is that OK? Yeah, I don't mind. Has this been easier than you thought today? Yeah, I think with you being here, it's been easier than if I'd have come and done it on my own. Yeah. But now I know it's here. It's going so, to be a And lot it's easier. only up the blooming road, It's Graham. only up the street, and I don't even need a taxi to get here. Exactly. <laughs> Benjamin's on his way to see Graham's mother in Horwich, half an hour from where Graham lives in Manchester. He's hoping she'll shed more light on Graham's troubled adolescence and whether his difficult relationship with her previous partner was a catalyst for his out-of-control spending. And then this is Graham in his first few weeks at... Um secondary school. Look at that, smart as a new pin in his uniform, collar and tie tied. This was always Graham, always smart as a new pin. Mm -hmm. Hair had to be done then, even with the gel and so I had to buy him the gel. You see, lovely and clean and uh, that was that. I think this is Eileen now lives with her new husband David and Graham's younger brother Alan. Because what I understand so far is that Graham had a particularly difficult time around the age of 13. Mm -hmm. with your then partner and between you at the time you found a way to cope you found a way through which began more and more to become about a kind of almost financial transaction where you would buy him stuff and he would therefore feel that he had been I suppose nurtured in a way that otherwise wasn't happening in the house I think probably he's got some of the picture mm -hmm. The person that lived in our house at that mm -hmm. time um, had strong issues with Graham's demeanour, um, probably from round about the age of 11 onwards. Graham's always been um, the artistic type, well into his art. You mean gay? Or just... At that point, artistic? at that point, he was in touch with his artistic side. And I think it was round about 15 or 16 right. that I accepted that Graham was gay. From him being sort of 12 onwards, um, Graham was was put through the mill, really. And it got to the point where Graham lived in the house, but really didn't live in the house. He lived upstairs mm. in his bedroom. I do think it's quite clear that he's internalised a great deal of anger during that period in his life. And it's very uncomfortable for him to sit with it. Because the other thing he talked about is that he can't stand to be alone. And I imagine this comes from during that period when he's living here, he spent an awful lot of time stuck in his room on his own. And he particularly says, I can't bear to be stuck in my room on my own. And it's like that experience is triggering off, bringing back up all the anger that he had as a kid. Is that hard to hear about? Sorry. Oh. Do you feel sad because of um, what happened with Graham, or do you feel sad because of how you feel about what your role in that was? All of it, really. Yeah. Yeah, all of it, because 
at the time, I did my level best to keep everybody happy. Do you remember the first time you, if you like, gave him something as an act of compensation rather than yes. just... Yes. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Um, the, the person who lived here had uh, been away for a while. I'd, I'd actually told him to go. Mm -hmm. And then when he'd gone, I don't know why. I, I still, to this day, don't know why. I asked him to come back. Yeah. And Graham and Alan were saying, don't let him back in, Mum, we don't want him back. Mm -hmm. And to pave the way and try and smooth things over because he was coming back the following day, I bought them what they'd been asking for. And for Graham, it was the very expensive trainers, which I could ill afford. Right. But I bought them for him. And he remembers that so clearly to this day. So do I. <laughs> yeah. So do I. So maybe for Graham, it was so terrible that he was coming back into the house, that he put all of his attention and all of his feelings and all of his thoughts onto the shoes and began a process of pushing him more and more into the material realm, perhaps, so he could mm -hmm. cope with being less and less emotional. Yeah. This sadness and, if I could suggest, perhaps guilt from everything that went on before is so present when it's here with us today at this mm -hmm. table. And... I suspect that's what Graham is able to use against you to get money out of you. Absolutely no doubt about that. Yeah. What I want you to do is make that effort to meet him halfway, if you like. So it's not just saying no with the money, but saying yes with something else, with kind of the time and presence and love. Because I think that'll make a big difference to him, because what he really fears is being alone. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's interesting some of the things that you just said because when I just think back over the past few weeks, um, occasionally he's asked David and myself, why don't you come down to Manchester and come on a night out with us? You know, why don't you come down the village and so on? And I've just, I just haven't even entertained the idea because I just don't do bars. I have asthma, yeah. I don't do bars. But I wonder whether that is, you know, sort of he wants us to get involved. Um, he also rang the other week and asked us to go to the Chinese buffet for Sunday lunch, and I declined that one as well. Yeah. You know, so... The next right. thing you know, you'll get a text message saying, can I have 500 quid? Mm. So maybe it's better to give him some presents than some presents, if mm. you see what I mean. Because yeah. that's what happened in the past, isn't it? Yeah. And I think you have to recognise that the ongoing request for stuff is really an ongoing request for attention. I think that there's a lot there that can help Graham. She seems to understand the issues, and so I'm hopeful that between them they can go on to really try to change the way they relate to each other, because there's so much pain there and so much suffering and so much sadness. They need to find a way to negotiate that between themselves in a different way other than by using money. Having met Graham's mother, Benjamin's keen to catch up with Jay. Graham's now halfway through his retail therapy, and Benjamin wants to make sure he doesn't fall off the wagon. It's weird with Graham because what I noticed at the beginning is he's a real, real creature of habit. And sometimes I think it's a double-edged sword because it, in a way I'm hoping that once we get out of some of the old habits and instill new ones, that they will just become, if you like, quicker habits for him to get used to. I mean, Graham is definitely capable of change and I think the more we can sort of go with him and sort of almost hold his hand while he tries new things, I think that might make it easier for him and then he'll just carry on. I think you could say the same for the relationship with his mother. It's going to be hard to break that habit because they've developed a pattern of relating to each other that mm. very much defines their relationship. This is the mother-son relationship, that he's irresponsible and she enables it by giving him money. And so, not only if they're going to change with the money, are they going to have to navigate a different way to cope financially, but also they'll have to find a different way to be together. I need to give Graham a way to feel more safe and comfortable with all those difficult feelings when they come up for him, when he's left alone at home, like any normal adult has yeah. to be in their life. He's not a teenager anymore. So, I think what I'm going to do is maybe take him to do something like meditation. Right. Something where they're... It's, in a way, it's a way to get out of the space that he's in, but without actually physically getting out mm. of it. Graham's been taking Jay's new budget seriously. He's focusing on earning more money and has upped his hours at the bar from 15 to 35 a week. 
It's the first time since he left his marketing job eight months ago that he's been doing a full week's work. But while Graham's learning to live by the book, his flatmates aren't. They're behind with their rent, and the guarantor on the house is Graham's mum, Eileen. She's on the phone chasing the money, and Lisa's in the firing line. I find it like, quite annoying when I'm trying to get, make the effort to get sorted out that people around me are still having to ring her and ask her for things, or she's still having to help out the people around me. And that's like half the, the bloody trouble, you know. She's not just helping me, she's helping every bloody person that lives with me as well. And it shouldn't have to happen, it shouldn't. Nobody is paying a late any month. Well, I'm not pay, I don't pay a late. You do pay a late. Pay no, you're month. paying, you've paid your rent for the month that's just gone. Every single other person in this house pays in advance. Yeah, I've already spoke to your mum about that. She's I don't me. care. Yeah, but she's not fine with when she, she rings me. me she is not it, fine when she rings me. Oh. I'm bothered. Yeah. And you live with me. And as long as you're living with me, and I'm bothered, you fix it. You're not the one that has to listen to her on well, the she phone. She told me to tell you to shut up and say everything's completely fine. Right, well, it's not. I'm not so fine because all this fine. unnecessary stress she over money, if you don't like it, move out. But she, I'm not moving Right, no, you are because I'm not putting up with it. Move out, move out, move out, move out. You pay fucking less rent than anybody else. Yeah, but at least mine's paid on time and it's my mother, so she shouldn't have to do it for you. Move out. No, it's going to get sorted. It's not happening anymore. It's not... Like, she paid her rent last week and then she had no money, so she rang her and asked for it back. You know, you don't do that. <laughs> After a sobering set to with Lisa, his other flatmate, Ben, is taking Graham out to lunch. Today, I'm going for lunch with Ben and he's paying. I think people are starting to feel sorry for me not having the same amount of money to spend that I usually have, so it's a refreshing change being taken out by somebody else. Graham's checking his bank account to see how much his extra wages have added to his coffers, and he's pleasantly surprised. £112 and 68 pence. <laughs> I'm going to use the £112 that I've got in my bank account to pay some rent to my mother for the first time in months. I feel quite bad that I've not been paying any rent, and she's been paying it all for me, because I'm sure there's other things she'd like to be spending the money on instead of a house for me that she doesn't even live in. So, yeah, I do feel a little bit bad. Today I've paid my own rent for the first time in probably as long as I can remember, actually, come to think of it. Um, I've paid £100 to my mum. That leaves me £72 left to go, which is quite an achievable target, so she can have that next week. I'm a bit skint now, but at least everything's paid for, and that's a first, so... Hopefully everything will be moving on up from here. Graham's doing well on the earning front, but there's one key area of his spending that Jay still needs to tackle. She's asked him to bring two of his favourite shirts to their next meeting. Hiya, Graham. Hey, How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, I'm glad you brought your shirts with you. I'm intrigued. I know you don't know why, <laughs> but trust me on this one, OK? Because I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Jay knows a little place where, for just £80, Graham can make the most of his love of fashion. Miss Jones, have you ever been in here before? No, I've just walked past. <laughs> on your way to Vivian West. <laughs> She's introducing him to a tailor. The reason I brought Graham here today to meet yeah. you is we're going to talk shirts, OK? okay? Because Graham has been, I say been, a real Westwood boy. And I thought it'd be a really nice idea if you talked to Nick about maybe designing something yourself. OK. Because Graham has got a fashion degree, haven't right, you? I do. <laughs> Which you don't use. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so if we look at this shirt, talk me through that, of what the elements of it that you like. Um, it's very unusual. I mean, you don't see many men's shirts these days, especially mm -hmm. in other high street places that you can get that have got kind of like the silver glitter. in it. Yeah, a bit of glitter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All waiting for you, Graham, to pick. Have you got any fabrics that are sort of jumping out at you to pick? Yeah, I think this one over here is fantastic. Oh, that one? That's yep. good, isn't it? That's the one. Oh. Wow. It looks fantastic, doesn't that it? That is quite you, Graham. I think so. Yep. 
<laughs> you want it quite fitted? Please. So 10 out of 10 is 37. Yep. Can you not tell me what that one is? Whisper it. Waist, 31. Oh, oh right. it's all right, Graham. <laughs> and heels together, please. Thank you. <laughs> Feet, 39. 39. <laughs> Now that Graham's earning more money from his extra bar work, he's more motivated than ever. And he's aware of what he could be earning if he went back to his previous career in uh, marketing. I think those tickets might have arrived. Well, I've got money in my bank for the first time ever, I think. I don't think I've ever had that. No matter how much money I've been earning, whether it was £26,000 or whether it's been £6,000, I've never had money in my bank. And I've got that for the first time in ages. Graham's arranged an interview at a recruitment agency in the centre of Manchester. And keeping up with his new money-saving ways, he's even catching the bus. I'm quite getting used to using the bus. I mean, I feel a bit weird getting on it today in my suit in the middle of Cheatham Hill. <laughs> and it's nice to have kind of like the spare money rather than waste it on a taxi. Uh, I'd like to do sales and marketing like I've done for the past couple of jobs that I've had, but I'm willing to take anything if the money's right at the moment, just to um, give me a bit of extra. Um, it went well, actually. Um, she's put me through for a job tomorrow that's £20,000 a year, so not too bad at all. Yeah, very interesting. So. Fingers crossed I should stand quite a good chance. Now that Graham's taking his financial responsibility seriously, Benjamin wants Graham to face up to his fear of spending time alone. So, Graham, I brought you here to do a meditation class because I don't want you to be stuck in your room with nowhere to go. He's booked a meditation class and is hoping it will teach Graham some inner calm. And what feelings come up when you are on your own? That um, It always tends to turn into me causing an argument with somebody when I'm on my own because I don't like doing it, so mm -hmm. I'd like that to stop. OK, so you mean you're on your own and then you Get seek out whoever's around and yeah. have an argument? For them not being there. <laughs> oh, I see, OK, OK. All you're going to do while we're meditating is you're just going to remember to be the observer. So whatever thoughts come up, whatever feelings come up, you just watch them. You're not judging them. You're not thinking this is a bad thing to think, this is a good thing to think or feel. You're just noticing, oh, I'm feeling angry now, I'm feeling lonely now. And as soon as you do that, you have the power of choice. But when you take that step back, then you can decide how you're gonna react to the anger. Breathing nice and deep and long. Even though you're not feeling fear or, or panic or anger now, just remember a little bit of what that feeling is like and very slowly the knot of emotion, wherever it is in your body, starts to untie and release. Have the feeling inside that whatever struggles you go through, whatever comes up, that you have the power to heal it and release it. And just a few more deep breaths. And now you're completely releasing that emotional energy. You can imagine it flowing out of your body. So even though you weren't feeling panicked or agitated when we started, can you feel how that technique might help when you are? Yep, without a doubt. Yeah? Yep. And by the way, was meditation more or less what you expected, or was it...? No, it wasn't. OK. <laughs> <laughs> what were you expecting? More chanting. <laughs> <laughs> no. What I want to leave you with is the ability to be alone in a room without needing to spend money. Because that's what you highlighted yep, as definitely. the trigger that empties your wallet. Yep. 
On top of that, we've got the situation with your mother where you use her as your bank. Now, I had a chat with her about that, and she feels a lot of guilt about what happened to you as a child, which is why she allows you to use her as a bank. You feel a lot of anger about it, which is why you do use her as a bank. Um, I think now both of you understand that cycle really well. Mm. And by understanding it better, it gives you a chance to move on as adults. And I asked her to spend more time with you rather than give you more money. And I think this struck a chord in her because she remembered sometimes that you'd invited her to come and do something, a Chinese meal on a Sunday or a meal in the evening. And she didn't come. And she didn't come. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. And she didn't really connect this with kind of an emotional plea. She just was thinking practically. So I think it'd be nice if you spent a bit more time with her. And to kick that off, I'm going to suggest that maybe you could do something for her this time. Yeah, that would be nice. Good, well... I'll leave in your capable hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Graham and his mum are on their way to London, something they used to do together when Graham was little. It's Graham's treat, and using his extra wages, he's bought two cheap day returns. I need to tell you right away. Number one, I haven't brought much money. It's Number right. two, I Before haven't got any cards on. with me. Before OK, well. I've got some money. It's fine. It could be my treat for a change. Oh, I like this. First, it's a trip down the River Thames. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Big Ben. Oh. Big Ben. It's just very good. I like it. The fact that he hasn't asked for anything now for the last month. That's absolutely amazing. Certainly my bank balance is better for it. Um, rather than paying money out, I've actually had money come back in. He's cut down on his mobile phone bills by far. He's not asked me for any money whatsoever. Before catching the train home, there's time for early dinner at a top restaurant with great views over London. And because it's early, they get a bargain deal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can we possibly just get a jug of tap water? Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Nice treat. But it tastes better because you're paying. Oh, no. This will be much, much better. Well, that's a good deal, then, isn't it? Is it sort of a pre-theatre thing? You seem a lot more cheerful yourself, anyway, now that you've started paying things well, off. Just because I've got from one payday till the next and still have money, that's why. <laughs> Does it make money. you feel better? No, it's nice knowing that, like, I don't have to spend a few days without a single penny. It is. I'm really proud of how you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. But no, I've had, like, more money. Should the beans not go with the sausage? No. But, um... It's all rather posh, this grave, you know. Five weeks ago, when Benjamin and Jay first met Graham, most of the money he was spending was wheedled out of his mother sometimes up to £3,000 a week. There you go. There you go, honey. But after some serious soul-searching and some practical advice, Graham's put in the hours at work and has stopped begging for money. Jay and Benjamin have come to catch up with a very different Graham. Graham liking the shirt. This is Graham's new shirt that he designed himself yeah. and bought and had made and everything for £80. It's very nice. I know. See no more Vivian Westwood. Nope. It's a Graham designed shirt. How much would a similar shirt from Vivian Westwood cost? Oh, uh, twice as much at least. Do yeah. you feel a sense of pride wearing your own creation? I do, definitely. It's yep. really nice. You had lots of compliments on it. I have. It fits a lot better as well. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> when we first met you, you were spending almost £500 a week, yep. and now you're averaging about £150 a week, which yep. is a massive difference. Mm. What have you done about taxes? 
I've been in two. Oh. <laughs> and I didn't pay for either of them. Really? That's <laughs> good news. <laughs> Very good. How do you find that this change in your spending has changed your relationship with your mother, if at all? Um, it's really nice, actually, hearing the surprise in her voice when I ring her and she finds out I don't actually want anything. So, yeah? Yeah. Is that a new experience for you? It's a new experience for me and for her. So. Mm. <laughs> I've actually started to save a bit as well. Have you? Mm. Graham! Mm, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is big progress. It is big progress. Graham's savings account. Saving money, and it's actually pleasant seeing the money growing. It's stashed under my bed at the moment. <laughs> 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 and I've also got a second interview for a job that earns me three times more a year than I'm earning at oh, the moment. Really? Wow. So hopefully... Graham, what I'll are you going to do with all of that money? I don't roll around in it, probably. <laughs> 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 so you've really done well, though. I'm really yeah. pleased with that. Thank you. you really have. It's been really nice, actually, no, to has. work with you and, you know, to go through this whole process together. Mm -hmm. And it's been, I don't know, necessarily easier than I thought, but, you know, smoother than I thought it would be. We'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific.